rise and shine for the light has come. Amen. <laughs> Let's stand to our feet on this Resurrection Sunday morning as we celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, God's not dead. Amen. He's surely alive. Yeah. He's living on the inside. What's he doing? Roaring like a lion. Amen.
Hallelujah. God's not dead. <laughs> I said, God's not dead. <laughs> he's, he's, that's what sets him apart from all other gods is that he's the one that died and three days later rose again. Thus, happy resurrection day. <laughs> Woo! Amen. And where would we be had he not? Raised, been raised from the dead and now ascended to the right hand of the Father. I want you to turn to your neighbor this morning. I want you to shake somebody's hand, hug somebody's neck and say, my God's not dead. He's surely alive. You guys keep standing. Y'all keep standing. It ain't over. It ain't over till it's over yet. <laughs> blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Yeah. 
you to lift your hands to heaven this morning. I want you to lift it up, your right hand, and just tell the Lord this morning how, how grateful you are for all he's done for you. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. God, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. We bless your holy name. We, we appreciate you this morning. Thank you for your cross. But thank you that you rose from the dead three days later so that my feet could be set on solid ground, so that I could walk and not stumble. Lord Jesus, thank you that I have a hope and a future because of you this morning. We're so grateful. As the prayer team comes this morning and to the front, you know, here at Life Fellowship Church, if you're new, we, we can be, kind of be a wild bunch. But I'd rather be wild for Jesus than for anything else. How about you? <laughs> And you know, I'll tell you why I'm wild for Jesus. I'm wild for him because he's done so much for me. I'm wild for him because before him, I was nothing, I had nothing, and I wasn't going to be anything. And this morning, if that's you, if you've been tossing to and fro the weights of this world, circumstances in your life been heavy on your shoulders, you have a need, maybe you need healing in your body, Maybe you need a miracle in your finances. Whatever it is, he is faithful to meet your every need. The Bible says that he never leaves us nor forsakes us. And so God is faithful today. So if you have a need this morning, whatever it is, I just ask that you come forward and let these precious people pray with you. Because the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be also. And if two people agree on anything touching, it shall be done. So if you're in a dire circumstance today or if you just need a little encouragement and a little strength for your journey, come this morning and let us pray for you. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Thank you for your presence, Lord.
give the Lord a hand of praise this morning for his goodness and mercy to us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. How many of you believe we serve a good God today? He's a risen Savior. Amen. He lives on the inside of our hearts. That's how we know. Praise God. I'm so glad to have you in the house of the Lord with us today at Life Fellowship Church. We welcome each and every one of you. Would you turn about uh, four people and tell somebody, God is on your side. Would you tell them, God is on your side. I want you to give our youth group, their name is Echo, Echo Youth Group, Cody Hooper. Give them a warm welcome as they come and present a drama to us today.
Well, how many enjoyed that? Isn't that good? How many of you are glad that nobody got hurt up here today? I'm so, a couple of times I went, I heard barely go. Well, that was wonderful, Cody. Echo, y'all did an awesome job. Awesome job. Wow. Thank you so much for blessing us today. Well, we're so thankful, like I said, to have each and every one of you. I want to introduce my wife, if you don't know her. She's one of the finest and most beautiful ladies. Puts up with me in a whole lot of ways, and she had a lot to do with yesterday. Would you give Beverly a big welcome this morning as she makes a few announcements today? Well, Echo, y'all did awesome, and my daughter's hands was sweating over here because she thought... She thought someone was going to hit the ground, but Jesus is faithful, isn't he? <laughs> well, we want to welcome, if you are a guest here today, we are so glad that you're here. Uh, we just want to honor you. And inside your bulletin, there is a little card. It's a connection card. And if you would like to fill that out and put it in the offering, and we want to send you more information about some of the exciting things that we do around here at Life Fellowship Church. And we are a church of lots of excitement, so we have lots to tell you. So we are just honored, and we want to give you a hand for being here today. Let's welcome them. And I want to say a special thank you to our great and successful Easter egg hunt yesterday. Wasn't it awesome? We had over 2,000 people here at, on our campus, and we had about 100 workers, and you guys did an awesome, awesome job, and you should be so proud of yourselves for doing all that you did. This, the weather worked out. We had hail the night before. But you know what? We woke up to sunshine, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful day. And I just want to personally thank you for all your labors of love that went into that, all the stuffing of the eggs, working the booze, selling hot dogs. It was a marvelous, marvelous day. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And inside your bulletin, give yourselves a hand. That was Y'all did awesome. Did awesome. And inside your bulletin, we have some several things that's coming up. And in, in the month of April, you will notice that we're having Echo Spirit Night, our Kenya Missions Yard Sale. And you can read for yourselves, but we always have something going on around here. And, and we will have something just for you because we love you. God is so faithful. And I just want to personally say happy Easter to each and every one of you. God bless you. I want to just clarify one thing. We did have hail the night before, but it was the kind that comes down out of. <laughs> For all you carnal people out there, all right. Yes. I want our ushers to prepare to receive the morning tithe and offering today. And um, when we built this church six years ago, uh, the Lord spoke to my heart and said it'll be a church that is visible, accessible. And it will be a church that is undeniable as people come. And, and I think, uh, and unavoidable. And yesterday, there was a, it was unavoidable to be, not be here. There was a lot of people on this campus. Uh, and, I, and I thank God for what he did. Our whole desire was to put a smile on people's faces uh, and watch those kids. You know, 20,000 eggs is gone, what, in 15, 20 seconds? Boom, it was gone. <laughs> Uh, and I'm thinking, all this work, and it's gone. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Just watching their faces light up and the joy and watching uh, the families come together uh, on our church property, it just blessed my heart so much. I want to thank all the businesses that had a part in supporting the egg hunt yesterday. We had a number of businesses uh, come and step up to the plate, and it so blessed us. It made it happen. And uh, our, our desire here at this church God's positioned us to make a difference, have an impact, assert an influence, bring about change, and fulfill our purpose. Uh, we are advancing our vision. We are promoting our purpose. And we know that alone we're just a voice, but together we're a mighty force in this earth. And uh, we believe that in giving, uh, sowing seed, we believe in tithing. And as we tithe, it is a worship to God. He is the source of all of our life. And um, we want you to uh, participate. If you have a desire in your heart to, to, to give today, all of our regulars, we want you to tithe. We want you to worship the Lord today. And in tithing, we teach at this church 
that we are to declare that God has delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And we do that knowing uh, that he purchased our salvation. We're thankful for the uh, opportunity to give. We believe that whatever leaves our hand, it doesn't leave our life. It goes into our future and it multiplies because God is a faithful with seed, time, and harvest. How many of you have been blessed by the Lord as you've been faithful to him? How many of you found God to be faithful to you? Any a faithful God? He certainly is, and uh, we're so thankful uh, for, for his faithfulness to us. Our church has never been behind ever on a payment of any kind. We've only been ahead, and I thank God for his faithfulness to us. If you have a check, make it out to LFC. Uh, there is an offering envelope in your bulletin or right there on, uh, in your chair or in the insert of the bulletin uh, or in the chair, and we would like for you to just make sure it's designated tithe or offering. And uh, if, if you're a guest today, we want you to fill out the connection card. It's also right there. on. If you have a prayer request, we want to pray. We have a prayer team that prays with people. We want to pray with you. Uh, if you have a praise report, I want you to fill that praise report out. And we want to give God glory for great things he has done. And just drop it all into the offering plate as it goes by. Come ahead, ushers, and let these wonderful men of God serve you today as we are faithful to the Lord, as we worship him with our tithe and with our offering. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this crowd of people. I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for your faithfulness to us. Lord, we look to you as the source of our life. We thank you that you have delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of your dear son. We acknowledge you as the source of all of our life. I speak favor, peace, and increase upon your people. Go before us and open doors that need to be opened, close doors that need to be closed. We'll give you the praise and we'll give you the glory in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Go right ahead, ushers. Go right ahead. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean you can only come this far? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? Whose words alone can catch a falling star? This life within me cries I know my Redeemer lives Yes See the very same God That spins things in orbit He runs to the weary the worn and the weak And those same gentle hands That hold me when I'm broken See, they've conquered death To bring me victory Redeemer, He lives. 
Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Are you thankful he lives today? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Tell you what, my, my, my. Thank you, Tammy. That was wonderful. All the kids, I would like for you to come forward, and we're going to bless you today. We always like to take a few moments in the service. We love the kids of Life Fellowship Church. We believe that God's going to raise them up to be preachers and missionaries and Christian businessmen and Christian business women and entrepreneurs. They are our future, and we believe that God loves them and has a plan for their life. That's why we go overboard to minister to them. And there's a great children's church. And uh, I know they came to hear about Jesus, but there will also be a Nintendo DX given away back there. And uh, we'll get them here every way we can, but we're going to get Jesus to them. Amen. If you would, stretch your hands toward these kids. I don't know if I've got a long enough blessing. I'll make it last. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I thank you for these children today. I thank you for their life. And God, I declare over them, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you with sound minds, health in your bodies, angels to surround you all the days of your life. I bless you from children to know the Holy Scriptures that's able to make you wise unto salvation and blessings to follow you every day that you live. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, kids. Sing one more for us, Renee. What you got? Come on, give the kids one more hand of thanksgiving and praise as they go. God bless you, kids. <laughs> Lord.
Thank you, musicians. You did a wonderful job. If you have your Bibles, you want to take your Bibles, and we're going to look in a few moments at Matthew chapter 28 and also John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Uh, there's some notes in the bulletin uh, if you'd like to follow along and just fill out a few things. Now, I want to tell you ahead of time that I am an audience participation preacher. And what that means is that every once in a while, you say a big amen while I'm preaching. When you hear a good point, you know it's like saying amen to a preacher. is like saying sick them to a bulldog, right? And um, I want to preach to you the truth this morning. Hope beyond the scope of every limitation. Everybody say that with me. Say hope beyond the scope. Of every limitation. Amen. May God bless his word today. May God bless our hearts today. In the name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said. Amen. Hallelujah. We do get rowdy around here once in a while. This is more of a calmer service. We're radical about Jesus. People who've been born again. People who are on their way to heaven. People who have a reason to live. We get excited about the Lord. If people can get excited about March Madness and basketball, and I love basketball, how many of you know we ought to be that much more excited about Jesus? So we clap our hands, we raise our hands, we shout real loud, and uh, sometimes we get really happy, happy. And uh, what you saw a while ago, Brother Garland went around the aisle. He's done that for 29 years. Because if you've known what, how God has touched his life and where God brought him from and what's going on in his life with the Lord, he's a happy man in the Lord. And so he, he, he worships the Lord when he runs sometimes. And we let that go. So we allow a lot of things to happen, and um, we want you to have your liberty. How many of you are thankful for a church where you have liberty to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth in the way that you desire? Amen. If y'all stick around, we'll make all of y'all some good Pentecostal charismatic people. Amen. John chapter 20 in, in just a moment, but how many of you know if Easter is, is about anything, it's about the discovery of meaning. It's the discovery of hope and purpose and promise in the midst of any and every situation, circumstance, and challenge that you are facing. There is hope beyond the scope of every human limitation and evil attacks that have been leveled against you. Just as the destructive powers of darkness did not write the final chapter in the life of Jesus, the resurrection also lets me know that trouble, tests, or trials, devils, demons, or darkness that I go through do not have the final word in my life. How many of you know God has the final say in our life today? See, now we can practice. How many of you know God has the final say in your life today? Amen. Okay, good. We'll go to lunch a lot quicker. Y'all do that. Amen. How many of you know God puts a comma where the devil wants to put a period? The devil, the devil wants to put a period in your life, means, which means the sentence is over. It's finished. It's stopped. It's ended. It's done. But a comma is different. It's a pause because a comma says there's more to come. A comma says that's not the end. A comma says we're not stopping here. We're not finished here. A comma is a pause and it says there's more to come. How many of you know there was more to come in the life of Jesus after he died? How many of you know there's more to come in your own life? Amen. When you're going through times of darkness in your life. You see, more to come is God bringing good and glory out of what the devil meant for evil. There's more to come in your life. Whatever you're going through right now, that's not the end. It's not over because it's never over till God says it's over. Amen. It, there's more to come. God will make a way where there is no way in your life. There's more to come. Stay tuned. I might be down, but I'm not out today. I said I might be down, but I'm not out today. Sometimes you've got to be like the Energizer Bunny and take a licking, but keep on ticking. We might be down, but we're not out. Amen. I know this. There's more to come. I'm going to be stronger for what I went through than before I went through it. I'm going to come out stronger on the other side. 
Amen. I've learned that my setbacks, amen, are, are only setups for a comeback. Because Jesus came back, I'm going to come back with him victorious over everything that I went through. Amen. I know there's more to come. I know this. Amen. The devil's going to be ever sorry that he ever came and attacked me to begin with. How many of you know the devil was sorry that he ever crucified Jesus? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, had he known it, what was going on, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Amen. Because he got a sore head when Jesus stepped on his head and crushed the head of the serpent on that day. And how many of you know there's more to come when you're going through darkness and you're going through times that you don't understand? I want to tell you something. The devil's going to be sorry that he attacked you because you're going to come out the other side. You're going to come out victorious, triumphant, a victorious over everything that you've been through. And you're going to know God is on my side. And if God be for me, who can be against me today? Hallelujah. So we are included. We are invited into the greatest victory that has ever won, the victory of the resurrection. Jesus said in John 14, in verse number 19, because I live, you too shall live. And I just want somebody to know this morning that you can be confident today of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you is going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You're not going down, you're going over. Amen. You're not at the bottom, you're going to rise up and be the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath, because God loves you and he's on your side. And if he started it, he's going to finish it. He's the Arthur and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Matthew 28, look at verse 6 and 7 just real quickly. The angel said, he is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell. Everybody say, come and see. Come and see. Go quickly and tell. And, and I love these two things. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. You know, as a preacher, I counted a privilege and I counted an honor to make this announcement today to you that Jesus is not in the tomb, that he is alive and he is risen, just like he said. It's an honor for me to preach to you the resurrection that Jesus is alive. Everything we believe, everything that we hold to stands or it falls on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Everything I hold to as a Christian stands on this one thing. Did Jesus get up out of that tomb and walk out alive? You know, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 14 through 19, it says, if Christ is not risen, our preaching is in vain. The message says it's just smoke and mirrors. It'd be a terrible thing to come to church and be deceived all these years for 2,000 years. Our preaching is in vain says our faith is in vain. Verse 15 of that same chapter says, if Christ is not risen, we're just false witnesses of God. In other words, we're just talking about some fabricated fairy tale once upon a time. We're just false witnesses of God. If Christ is not risen, we are yet in our sins. Verse 19, if Christ is not risen, we are of all men most miserable. But I like verse 20 of 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead. What I want you to understand this morning is we're not just in church making time. I'm not just up here preaching uh, a sermon just to because I don't have anything better to do. I'm not here as a preacher preaching a sermonette to Christianette so we can all go to the dinette and then we all have a cigarette. <laughs> no, my preaching is not in vain this morning. My faith is not in vain this morning. My witness is not in vain this morning. I know that he's alive, not just from the word of God, but I know that he's alive because he lives on the inside of me. And I can tell you this morning, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. It's not in vain. I'm, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Anybody glad you're free this morning? Whom the Son has set free is what? Free indeed. Hallelujah. I'm about ready to get my handkerchief out and start waving it. I'm getting happy today. When we stand on Golgotha's hill and listen to the voice of Calvary as it rings out above every voice from every age, we hear the resurrection loud and clear saying to us, death has lost its death has lost to victory. Amen. Every curse has been broken. Sickness has been defeated. Sin, bondage, and addiction have been conquered. 
It lets me know as I stand there at the bottom of Calvary's Hill and the empty tomb, it lets me know that my past has been forgiven. The fires of the law have fallen and collapsed into the arms of grace. God has accepted the sacrifice of Jesus as sufficient payment for the debt of my sin. I hear a voice ringing out from Calvary this morning that my standing before God is accepted. Amen. When I couldn't get to him, he came to me. And today I'm accepted in the beloved. I hear a voice from Calvary in the empty tomb ringing out loud and clear to me that I today can have a fresh start. I can have a new beginning. I can wake up to a new day in my life. Weeping has endured for a night, but joy has come in the morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it today. Christianity, you see, is the only religion with a virgin womb at one end and an empty tomb at the other end. Oh, y'all are starting to get warmed up with me. Keep at it. Amen. See, there have been many great leaders and great thinkers and philosophers who have lived and have influenced others and have started religions. They've written books. They've even said good things. But when they died, they stayed dead. Confucius had a great influence in China and wrote many proverbs, taught many people. But when he died in 479 B.C., that was it. Today, he's still in the grave. Thumb through the pages of history and you come to a man by the name of Buddha, which means the enlightened one. But he was always searching for the truth. He had a profound effect upon people. But when it came to the end of his life, he died in 483 B.C. And that's it. He died and he's still in the grave. Turn the pages of history again to another man born in 570 A.D. by the name of Muhammad. Had a far-reaching influence from a vision as a young man. But in 632 A.D. he dies... And he's still in the tomb today. No matter how their history began or how their history was written, it all ends the exact same way. But when you come to this man called Jesus the Christ, are you with me today? You find a totally different history. You find a totally different ending to the story. When he was born, he was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He taught in parables and he worked miracles. And I see him crucified on a cross. I see him hung up high and stretched out wide, telling the whole world that I love. Amen to God. When he was on that cross, he was my representative and he was my sin substitute. He bore the penalty and died in my place. And I hear him as he's on the cross saying, it is finished. He didn't say I am finished. He said, it is finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What he came to do was finished on that day. And I hear him say, as he breathed his last breath, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And he gave up the ghost, and he died. My daughter is with us today. She's 23 now. But growing up in this church and uh, me trying to get her to bed was one of the biggest struggles I had as a father. And she knew how to play my heartstrings just a little bit. Keena, time to go to bed. Dad, I don't want to go to bed. Keena, I'm sorry. You got to get up and go to school. We got to go to bed. I'll come in and talk to you for a few minutes and bless you and pray for you. Okay, Dad. Dad, tell me a Bible story. Well, how's a preacher dad not going to tell his daughter a Bible story? Well, I start with Adam and Eve, ate the fruit. Then what, Dad? I go into Abraham. I go into Isaac. I went into Jacob. I went into the historical books. I went into the minor prophets. Then what, Dad? She's not ready for bed. But I'm thinking she's loving all the stories I'm telling her. And I've told her these a hundred times. Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He died on an old rugged cross. And then he died. She would say, and then what, Dad? I said, Kina, you know what happens next. She'd jump out of bed. He rose from the dead. I said, yes, he did, darling. Now time to go to bed. But then what, Dad? <laughs> He's coming back again one day. And then what, Dad? Amen. An hour later, she get to stay up a whole hour later because I hear stories. Amen. How many of you know the end of Jesus' life threatened to read like exactly the same way as all other influential leaders of religions who have come and gone? 
every sect, every cult, except for one major exceptional distinguishable difference. And that difference is why we are gathered here today. That difference is why we are gathered to sing the songs of Zion, to lift up our hands in worship. That one difference is why history is split down the middle between B.C. and A.D. and has become a reference point for every single day of your life. You see, the body of Confucius has disintegrated to dust and it is still wrapped quietly in a cocoon of death. The body of Buddha is still in the tomb. The grave has, has its death grip on the remains of Muhammad. But how many of you know the death of Jesus on the cross was not the conclusion of his life. Death did not have the last word. The tomb did not have the final say. The grave was not the end of the story because after hell had done its worst to the best that heaven had to offer, three days later, early Sunday morning, the Bible says that the earth began to shake. The seal of the tomb was broken and the stone was rolled away. The Spirit of God invaded the borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea and went right into the body of Jesus. And Jesus came back to life. He stood up with resurrection power. He stepped across the threshold of that borrowed tomb that could not open, hold him. He opened up his mouth and in Revelations 1, verse 17 and 18, he said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth. Behold, I was dead, but behold, I'm alive forevermore. And how many of you know Jesus didn't just come back to life? He came back to life with the keys of hell and of death. Hallelujah. I said he came back to life with the keys of hell and of death. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody who can walk out of their own tomb after being dead for three days, that is one bad dude. Can you say amen today? Amen. Amen. You see, he, he, he came back as a champion. He came back as a conqueror. He came back victorious. He was who he claimed to be he was. He could do what he said he could do. Amen. And because he rose from the dead, the Bible says God highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. I don't care what anybody ever tells you anywhere else. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. In this church at Life Fellowship, we lift up the name of Jesus because he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Jesus is loved in this church. Jesus is worshiped in this church. Jesus is our all in all in this church. He is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. This morning, I don't have to... I want to announce that Jesus is not only the way to God, he is God. He's the son of God, and he is God. And he's the only way you'll ever get to God the Father. There is no other way. This morning, I don't have to bow at a, kneel at a Shinto shrine or bow at, a, bow at a Buddhist temple or worship a Hindu cow, or I don't have to lick a New Age crystal. I don't even have to know the way to San Jose. I, I don't have to commit to Sun, Young, Moon. How many of you know you got to go higher than the moon? you got to go to the sun. John 14, Jesus said, Thomas said, how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man will ever go to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. When any one of us confesses with our mouth, Romans 10, 9, the Lord Jesus, and believes in our heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Because with the heart, we believe under righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You know, for us, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. While we do all we do, have an Easter egg hunt, we don't believe in bunnies or eggs in that corner. You all know that. Amen? We have fun. We sanctify everything that the world tries to do, and we sanctify it. We bring people, and we preach Jesus to them. Because in the end, it's not about a bunny. It's not about a rabbit. It's about a redeemer. Hallelujah. It's not about eggs. How many of you know? It's about the blood of Jesus Christ who shed his blood. We're not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood as of a lamb, without spot and without blemish. Last year, there's a young man that was moved upon in his own life. And he brought his son, his family, came to the Easter egg hunt. And that week, he began to be moved upon about you know, am I being the example for my son that I need to be? 
Am I being the father that I need to be? And Jonathan, when he came to our Easter egg hunt, he woke up one morning a little bit later, and he thought, I need to go to church. He had not been in church consistently for the last 15 years of his life. He has a wonderful job, a wonderful family. But when he woke up one morning and says, I need to go to church, he came to church on Easter Sunday morning. And I preached the message of the cross and the resurrection. Jonathan gave his heart to God last year on Easter Sunday morning. Jonathan is here this morning in the back. Wave at everybody. Jonathan, if you would, is in the very back row. But he gave his heart to God. And his life has never been the same since he gave his heart to Jesus. He's hardly missed a church service. He's here working in every chance he gets. And he loves God with all of his heart. That's what the resurrection is all about. Matthew 28, 7, he said, go quickly and tell his disciples. And so there was an urgency to tell the message of the resurrection. In other words, go without delay. Go without stopping. Go without hesitancy. The angel knew the message of the empty tomb would give hope where there was despair. It would give joy where there was sorrow. It would give peace where there was uh, loss and anguish. He knew that it would turn their night into day. It would turn their morning into dancing. It would revive something that had been lost. See, the message of the resurrection says that God will revive something on the inside of your life that has died, that has been buried, that has slipped through your fingers, something that is lost. The message of the resurrection comes to you today. That's why I have a sense of urgency in my heart to come to you with this message that Jesus is alive, the tomb is empty, because I know that when you embrace this truth in your own life, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what's been lost, no matter how bad you're hurting, there is healing and there is hope beyond the scope of every limitation that has ever come against your life. Jesus said in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. He that was dead, though he was dead, yet shall he live. You see, resurrection is not just a day. It's not just event. But resurrection is a person. And that person is Jesus. He is the resurrection. He is the life. When you embrace Jesus, you embrace the life of Christ on the inside of you. Are you with me this morning? Hebrews 7, 25 says he is able to save to the uttermost. We preachers have said he's able to save from the guttermost to the uttermost, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for us. Not only do I feel privileged, but I sense a sense of urgency. And now just we're winding this down. But in John chapter 20, verse 11 through 13, Mary Magdalene was without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And see two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And I love this story here, because Mary Magdalene was a woman with a dark, promiscuous, messed up past. Anybody in the room here with a dark, messed up past in your life? Okay, about five of you. I know the rest of you. I'll pray for a lion spirit to come out of you. <laughs> you see, Jesus had cast seven devils out of Mary Magdalene. She had been completely bound up in her life before she had met Jesus. But when she met Jesus, she became free. You know, it lets me know that a person with a past can encounter a God in the present. And he can transform our life and change our heart. And give us a brand new destiny. No matter how low you've gone. No matter how far down you have sunk. No matter how backwards or backslidden or jacked up you have ever been. No matter how messed up you are. No matter how long you've been that way. How many of you know God doesn't ever look at your past to determine your future? Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts, not thoughts of evil. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. I want to tell you something this morning. God wants to take whatever mess you've been in the past and make it into a message of his glory, of his power, and of his grace. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and all things are made new. The word in denotes position. The way you overcome your condition is to know your position. How many of you know if you don't know where you belong, you will adapt to wherever you are? Okay, that was a good place right there. Come on. Hallelujah. See, your future in Christ 
looks a whole lot better than where you are right now. You belong to Christ. The Son has come and set us free. The application here is, you see, this is why we have been, we who have been touched by God, we don't ever want to come to church. We don't want to look cute. We don't want to look proper. We don't want to just look proud. Because we know this. Had it not been for the grace of God, had it not been for his love that came to our heart, we would not be here today. I said we wouldn't be here today. Many people would be eat up with bitterness and unforgiveness had not God's grace came and touched their heart. Because somebody has done you wrong in the past. But instead of bitter, we got better because of Jesus. I'm here today, not looking cute, but I'm here to worship the Lord today because I, I, I don't have a needle that I'm sticking in my arm to try to make it through another day. Amen. I'm not looking at the bottom of a bottle wrapped in a brown paper bag today. I don't have to take a, a drugs or smoke something to get high today because I have the most high living on the inside of me today. Amen. I said I have Jesus, the most high living on the inside of me today. So I didn't come to church to play cute or, or, or to play dress up. I came to join with other brothers and sisters in the Lord who know without a shadow of a doubt. Had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would not be here in the house of the Lord today. I wouldn't be sitting in a church. I wouldn't be raising my hands to the Lord. But only the grace of God that has come to my life is the only reason why I'm alive today. And I'm here to shout from the rooftop, Jesus is alive. He lives on the inside of me. I'm going over and not under. Hallelujah. See, Mary was the last one at the cross, and she was the first one at the tomb. John chapter 20, verse 13, the angels asked, why are you weeping? She said, they've taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. You know what she was saying? Something she dearly loved had been taken from her. And with that loss, the twinkle had gone out in her eye. The smile had gone out from her face. The joy had gone out from her soul. She said, they've taken something from me, and I don't know how to get it back. What do I do? Something has been lost. Something has been misplaced. The excitement of living, the reason for my living, vision is gone. Purpose for me has gone out of my life. Something has happened in my life, and I don't know how to get it back. I don't know what to do from here. I'm stuck right here. They've taken my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. And that's why I love Easter this morning, because it's about restoration. It's about redemption. It's about recovery of everything that has been taken and lost in our life. And here, here is the hope of Easter. This is real quick. Number one, the promise is right in front of you. The promise is right in front of you. In verse 14 of John chapter 20, here's what she said. Here's what it says. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. She came back and she looked right at him, but she did not know it was Jesus. See, the problem is many people are focused on the wrong thing. Mary was so caught up with her hurt and her pain and her sorrow that she failed to see Jesus standing right in front of her. She looked back. She looked at Jesus standing, but she knew not it was him. I know it's so easy to get wrapped up with what has happened to you. I understand it's easy to get wrapped up with the pain and the grief and the hurt and the offense and the guilt because we blew it and we made a, a mistake. And we fail many times to see that the answer is right in front of us all along. As a pastor, I counsel people through the years, and I'll never forget talking to this one person. And I said to them, they came into my office, they said, we went to the doctor, they took x-rays, they said, I have this lump right here, and, and uh, it was down in their stomach area, and they were all worried. They said, the doctor said this, it could be a tumor, it could be cancer. And while they were just talking, and I sensed the anxiety and I sensed the worry, the Lord just dropped a word into my heart to give to that person. And I said, you know, I really feel the Lord wants you to know this promise. And they said, but you don't understand what the doctor said. I said, I know. 
But just hear this promise that what you're going through right now is going to be all right. It's not a tumor. It's not cancer. It's benign. I just felt that in my heart. I don't ever do that without, you know, you don't, you don't say just things off the cuff 29 years as a pastor without knowing something in your heart. A promise came right to this precious lady. Right after it came out of my mouth, she said, oh, that sounds good, but you don't know what the doctor said. You don't know how my uncle died, and you don't know about this, and you don't know about that. And I just kind of roll my head and think, you know, the answer is right in front of her to just rest and be at peace. How many of you know God wants us to be at peace? How many know God has a good word to speak to our heart? And so I didn't press the issue. I just listened the rest of the counseling session, had a word of prayer, and was glad that meeting was over. The next four days, she had to run, have more tests, and the test came back, and the test came back that it was benign, it was nothing, she had nothing to worry about. But for the last four days, she had fretted and anxiety and worried, but all along the promise had been right in front of her, and she could have rest at, rested at night. And she called me on the phone, it was on a Friday, Pastor, you were right. It's not a tumor. It's not cancer. I'm going to be all right. Why didn't you shout back on Friday when I was telling you this? The answer was right in front of you. How many of you know the answer is right in front of so many people, but we can't see it? In, in verse 16, it says she turned herself. In other words, when she saw Jesus, she turned away. She turned herself back in a few moments, but Mary was looking at the wrong Thing in the wrong way at the wrong time and she didn't see who it was see if you don't let go of the offense if you don't let go of the hurt if you don't let go of the negativity every hurt that you've ever had will hold you hostage the rest of your life the answer is right in front of our face how many of you know the devil wants to throw up everything he can in your life because he is threatened by where you're going the devil is trying to Everything in his power to threaten you because he's threatened by where you're going. But Jesus is telling us as we stand before the empty tomb, because I came out, you're coming out of that situation. Because I live, you're going to live. Because I have conquered, you're going to conquer. Because I was forsaken, you will never be forsaken. I will never leave you nor forsake you and I will never fail you. See, the time for magnifying the problem over and above the promise is over in our life. That was a good point to say amen right there. The time for focusing on our pain above the person of Jesus is over. There's nothing is ever going to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Your answer, your solution, your miracle is right in the middle of your mess. And it's time we, like Hebrews 12, 1, looking unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Not only is the promise right in front of us, but... Secondly, God already has a plan in motion. You got to know that whatever you're going through right now, God has a plan in motion. God wants to know. He wants you to know that even though you couldn't see it, God has been working behind the scenes all along. He's been setting up plans, priorities and purpose and putting them in motion on behalf of your life. How many of you know he loves you this morning? It may not look like it. It may not seem like it. It may not feel like God is at work, but I'm here to tell you God is at work working all things after the counsel of his own will. I was so blessed yesterday at the, at the festival because I ran into a, a lady who was talking to me, and she come up and she said, I just need to hug your neck. And I said, well, it's good to see you. And I, I remembered her because I remembered her husband was on drugs. Their marriage was on the rocks. They were about to get a divorce. It was because of the drug use. And I remember a lady in our church being connected to him uh, as a relative. He is over here in Burleson, in drugs, in a mess. His marriage is on the rocks. But here is his relative over here in church. The Lord lays him on her heart. She's praying. The church is praying. She came to me and said, you know, and she called his name and said, he's about to lose his marriage. He's been on drugs for so long. He is so bound up and addicted to drugs. And I said, you know, I'll be praying. But while I was praying, the Lord laid it on my heart to go and visit him. 
And I knew our church was praying. I knew there was power backing me up. I went down there to Burleson and popped in on him. And I said, hey, I'm from Life Fellowship in Kennedy. And I'm here to just love you. I'm here to just help you. Can I pray with you? I counseled him a little bit. His heart began to open. He was at the rock bottom of his life. I didn't hear any bells and whistles go off. I didn't see any fireworks, spiritual fireworks take place. But I laid my hands up on him, and I rebuked that addiction over his life. And I did it in the name above every name. And then I left. I didn't hear anything. But yesterday, now that was 15 years ago. Yesterday, she come up and she said, I want you to know, my husband, since the day you came and visited, that was the day his life began to turn around because he began to look to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. What I want you to understand is you might be in a mess right now, but don't think that God is far away. Don't think God hadn't already set things in motion. Somebody's been praying for you. I'm the answer this morning to somebody's mama who's been praying for you. I'm the answer to some grandma or grandpa's prayers who has been praying for you. God has already set up in motion, amen, an egg hunt. Come to church. You're not here by accident. You're here on divine appointment by God because whatever has been lost out of your life, no matter what your past has been, there is a God in heaven. There is an empty tomb that speaks to you that I am on your side. I have been working behind the scenes. I love you with an everlasting love and I'm embracing you in my heart and you're going over and not under hallelujah to God not long ago I was at a house and a tapestry a picture tapestry of some sort had fallen down on the floor and I reached to pick it up from the back side and all I saw was a massive jumble jumbled of colored twine and colored threads it didn't look like anything from the back side it didn't seem to make any sense. I looked at it. It didn't seem to have any logic to it. it. didn't have any rhyme or reason to it. But then I turned it over to the front side, and I saw a beautiful, perfected, proportionately symmetrical colored picture that was absolutely breathtaking. I looked back at the other side, a mess. Couldn't make any rhyme or reason. I turned it back to the right side. It was absolutely symmetrical, beautiful, proportionate. And what I want to tell you this morning is many people are looking at your life from the wrong side right at this moment. And it seems like what happened or is happening doesn't make sense. But God said, it's time to flip over to the other side. Ephesians 2.10 says, you are my workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works. The word workmanship is the word poema. And it's where we get the word poem. And it means there's a rhyme, there's a reason. You say, Pastor, look at my life. There's no rhyme, there's no reason. There's a mess. It's a jumbled up mess in my life. And God is wanting you to know you're my workmanship. It's not over till I say it's over. And I'll never say it's over until you're winning, victorious, and on top, and have come out and out and over. And God is in motion right now, working on behalf of many people's lives today. And I want you to know God wants you to flip it back on the right side. Because when you see your life from God's point of view, how many of you know everything is going to be all right? When you look at everything from God's plan, amen, God has a plan in motion. And what he started, he is going to finish. God is working on a plan and a promise. And the number three here, God has a power that will open up your eyes. And the Bible says in verse 16 that she looked at him and Jesus said unto her, Mary said her name, and she looked at him and said, Rabboni, which means master. See, God has the power and ability to wake you up and get your attention and change your perspective. How many of you know one word from God can change the rest of your life? One word from God, and he said, Mary, and the Bible says she turned herself. You see, the very first appearance of Jesus after he had been raised from the dead, in the hour of his greatest triumph, was to a humble woman who was grieving, who had anguish of heart, who felt like life had slipped away, who felt helpless and hopeless, didn't know where to turn. The resurrection message is about Jesus coming to you right where you are. And even in the middle of this corporate gathering, even in this big church 
as we're gathered here, God wants to speak a personal word to each one of us. Because today is, is it's knowing that Jesus is aware of your hurt. It's, it's knowing that Jesus is aware of our pain, of where we missed it, of where we came up short. Jesus is aware of the tears that have fallen because Jesus said, why weepest thou? And when the closest to you could never understand in a million years what you have gone through. When a mom and dad does not understand what you have gone through in, in your life and you know that other people don't understand. I want you to understand this this morning that there is a resurrected Savior and the resurrection says that Jesus knows what you've been through. He's touched. He comes to you and he's touched with the feelings of your infirmity. He gently, compassionately and caringly turns your attention away from everything that is bombarding your mind, overwhelming your heart, everything that is absorbing up your attention and, and intimately his voice speaks to you, your name. And in the middle of a church, he comes to you personally and said, I am the hope of your life. Just recently, a lady, a lady we, we did her funeral, it was a couple, about a month ago. She had come to our church in 2004, already like 55 years old. She had lived a hard life. She had drunk and drugs and you name it she had done it but another dear lady had invited her to church and she came and this was in 2003 she came to the other building and when she came to church I you could just look at her and tell but you know what happened we gave the altar call she came into the front and she gave her heart to Jesus Christ her life was a mess she had never been in church in her life all the days of her life but in a moment's time, the love of God embraced her, cleaned her up, set her free. She had been in our church all up to this time, just recently a month ago, working and serving. Everything that had overwhelmed her heart and bombarded and absorbed her attention of the past was completely wiped away by a resurrected Christ who came to where she was and his voice spoke to her heart. And in that particular moment, that intimate moment, she was forever changed. And that's what resurrection is about. There is no one in this room who is ever beyond the reach of the love of God. There is no amount of mistakes. There is no amount of grief. There is no amount of pain that is beyond where his grace and his word his mercy and his love cannot reach you. You may be at a loss about how to get back what's been taken from you, but there's a God who knows how to bring you back in. There is a God who knows how to restore everything that has been lost and taken out of your life. He has a promise that is right before you today. He has a plan that's already in motion. He has a power to cause you to have your eyes open and to see a whole different perspective and that you will not leave here like you came in Jesus name pain is inevitable but growth is optional you can't change what has happened but you can begin to see it differently through the eyes of grace through the eyes of his love it takes on a new meaning it takes on a whole new definition God knows how to abruptly, tenderly interrupt. Some of you needed a divine interruption this morning. Your mind's been racing. But what about this and what about that and what about this in my life? But God comes with a divine interruption and says, and he calls your name. And he says, Danny. And suddenly you see what's right before you. There's a promise in the midst of your pain. Because of what he has done, your future and your destiny is going to be more intimate than you can ever know as you walk hand in hand with Jesus this morning. Did you get anything out of that today? Give the Lord a hand of praise if you did. Amen. Come on, let's give him some praise like he, we deserve it. Come on. Act like it, if it hadn't been for the Lord who had been on our side. Come on and love him this morning. Shout a hallelujah with that clap. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of victory and a voice of triumph. Thank God for his goodness and mercy and his wonderful works.
You know, years ago as a pastor, I was going through the book of Psalms and praising God, and I came to Psalms 107, and it says, Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his mercy and for his wonderful works to the children of man. And you know, the Lord spoke to my heart, Psalm 68, take a psalm and let the voice of your praise be heard. And I've taught the church since then. We're so thankful and grateful for his wonderful works to us that it's time that we lift our voice and say, Lord, thank you for your work in my heart. And I'd like for you in your own way, you might like to lift your hands, lift your heart to God, but I want everyone to lift your voice in a way, maybe it's a whisper, maybe, it's, maybe it has volume to it, but I would like for you to put a little volume to it and just say, thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Go ahead and do it right now. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. It's all right. It ain't gonna hurt anybody. We're surrendering to God this morning. Say, thank you for your grace. God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your wonderful works to the children of men. Because if it hadn't been for you, who was on our side, we wouldn't be here this morning. And we know that. It's because of your great love. It's because there's nothing in our life, there's no mistake so bad, there's no sin too great that is beyond the reach of your love and your grace to touch us, to turn us around, to set our eyes once again upon the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Holy Spirit, I ask you right now in this place to begin to do that in each and every heart. Set our heart upon you, God. We need that miracle that is in our midst to be manifested in our life. That promise that is in the midst of our pain, God, may we see it clearly with the eyes of faith. The things that are invisible to the natural eye, but they become clear to the eyes of faith that you're on our side, that you're working in our behalf. May we see that there's a love of God that is embracing our heart this morning. And may we experience a new day, a new beginning. May we experience a new season in our life. May we know the resurrection power is to us word thank you jesus we love you this morning we praise you this morning and, I, and i'm here this morning as your heads are bowed and eyes are closed for just a moment i'm here preaching to people that may be in this service and say pastor i have lost something something is taken from me it doesn't matter how it was gone through your own sin own mistake through your own failure somebody else may have hurt you deeply but whatever it is something has been taken from you and you've not known how to get it back and you stand this morning in your heart saying God I need you today I can't find my way on my own this hurt has been so great there's been this that's been misplaced in my life this priority has been taken away this mistake has brought guilt and and I've lost my peace and I've lost my joy and I don't know how to get it back. I don't know how, Lord, to find my way back. I just want you to know this morning that there is a risen Savior who's intimately, tenderly speaking His voice to you this morning into your heart. And He's calling your name. And He's saying, I love you. I'm here. I'm going to show you the way. I'm going to make a way where there is no way. And he's saying to you, because I have come out of that tomb, you're going to come out of that mess. You're going to have a message that you've gotten in the middle of that mess. And it's going to be a message of honor and glory to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. And if you're here this morning and need to be redirected in your focus once again to Christ, to the promise if you say, Pastor, I'm here and I've lost something. I don't know how to get it back. And I just want you to pray for me this morning. I want to know this promise in my life. I want to know this hope in my life. Would you just lift your hand and say, pray for me this morning? Thank you, young lady. Amen. Thank you in the back, sir. Anyone else? Just say, pray for me. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Just say, pray for me today. Thank you in the back. Say, hands back there. Thank you, darling. Hallelujah. 
Something's been taken from me. There's something in my past that is gone. It's not there anymore. It feels like hope is gone. I feel helpless and I feel hopeless and I need help from Jesus this morning. Thank you, ma'am, in the back. Hallelujah. I need the Lord in my heart. Anyone else say pray for me today? Thank you, young lady. Amen. Thank you so much. Saints, keep praying. Thank you in the back back there. Amen.